guys, welcome back to Kyrgyzstan. We're just um, making our way down to the White Lake. So if you caught the last episode, we were hanging around with the um, nomadic family. But yeah, so I'm still with Ian at the moment, just heading down to the lake to uh, get some pictures, have a bit of a look around and uh, actually say goodbye. Because uh, shortly after this, we go our own ways. Ian heads off to Tajikistan and I'm heading off to uh, initially Bishkek and then off into Kazakhstan. From here, I take my own track just to the west of the uh, of the lake, and um, just just muddy tracks, nothing too interesting. I did get lost though, but I did get one of the best pictures of Teresa at the, on the on the trip so far, just at the bottom of the hill, just just before I hit the tarmac to head back to Bishkek. But once on the tarmac, the uh, the old puncher demons came back to haunt me. So yeah, on my way back to Bishkek and about 40 kilometers out, I've just had a front end blowout. Never had one of them before, and that was pretty bloody scary. I've got about 80, 90 kilometers an hour, and the, the, total, the front end just totally deflated. Where we going? Like, maybe. Uh, a bit of a tank snapper, which is uh, the same way I crashed last time, but not on the tarmac. So yeah, now I've got to change the bloody tyre. Great. Anyway, eventually got the tyre changed and uh, spent the next night in Bishkek. And from there I started heading towards Kazakhstan. You see me here just uh, entering a shop, uh, it's generally what I did every day. There was quite a bit of sign language because my Russian wasn't that good. And yeah, just a bit of, bit of meat, a bit of bread, a couple of bottles of water, and I was laughing. It cost me next to nothing as well. Only a few hours later, I made it to um, Almaty in Kazakhstan. I came to Almaty because it's on the way to my next destination. And also, if you remember Wes from our first Kyrgyzstan update, the guy on the Chinese bike, he had a uh, he has a friend here. Hey. He said, oh, if you're ever going through oh, there, you make sure you stop off at Tim's place. So that's what I did. Oh, wow. After spending a couple of nights and a couple of days with Timur and his wife, they looked after me ridiculously well, taking me out to see all the local places and sample the local beer, sample the local food. I had a great time with them, so cheers guys. Anyway, off to the next destination for me, a place called Sharon Canyon, which is a, which I've been told is a basically a smaller version of the uh, Grand Canyon in America, so I was well up for that. So here I am heading through the mountains before it turned to dust. Now this is part of the trip that I really enjoy. Just headed off into the middle of nowhere where the only traffic is wild horses or wild animals. It was just brilliant. Really made me feel like I was out in the wild. Because I was. <laughs> and yeah, it's just a really special part of the trip. Running into camels and horses and so on. Which you don't get in England. Well, not wild anyway. <laughs> this was the opening of the uh, the canyon. It's quite a steep. The, the camera doesn't give it justice, but it's a very steep very rocky, very slippery uh, descent. If you've seen a long way round, this is where they struggle to get the bikes up and uh, up and out again. You see, you see them drop the bikes many, many times. I think it's got a bit easier since then, or either that or I'm just an awesome off-road rider, which is clearly not the case. So yeah, just struggled down here until I got to the bottom. down to the end of the canyon now. I knew there was a, uh, a river running down at the bottom. I had a friend who actually came through here during my last trip, which was two years prior to this. And uh, he said, yeah, just make sure you go away to the bottom, just set up camp next to the river. So that's what I did. I headed down to the bottom, but it seems like they've uh, built something called, they called an eco camp down there. And you see, I'm shaking my head, a bit annoyed. And um, yeah, it was ridiculously expensive, as you'll find out next few seconds. 
I was slightly annoyed because I, I like the uh, being out in nature, like unspoiled nature, which, which is what I was expecting down the bottom of this uh, canyon, and this just this just ruined it really for me. But um, is what it is. Move on and stop whinging. Hey, welcome to uh, Charing Canyon. Um, just spent. It was quite hard getting down here on the, on the bike because uh, the bike was lying around, with, especially with all the weight on it. And I was looking forward to camping by the river with no distractions. But uh, as I'd been told by a friend he, uh, last year or the year before, he came down here, just camped by the river, no problem. It was lovely. But now it's this eco park, which has taken over all of the space next to the river. And it's well expensive. Places over there were 4,000, so maybe $16, $17. Um, I might ask how much of these yurts are, if they're cheap I'll, these yurts, if they're cheap I'll, I'll jump in one but if not I'll, uh, I'll drive, up the, drive up the valley a bit, anyway let's go see. Right well screw that, she wants about the same money for, for one, one of the beds in the yurt um, and it hasn't even got a shower, the shower's outside in the shed can't be asked spending that much money on basically the same as camping so I might have to just go and camp so I'm gonna go up the valley a bit in fact up the valley is a bit more a bit more interesting here this just looked like a normal valley <laughs> whereas that looks like a canyon so yeah I'm leaving now actually there's a guy coming over he might offer me a better, better deal let's see no <laughs> he's just telling me I couldn't use my phone down here but I wasn't I wasn't using my phone how does he know I have a phone? It's strange anyway. Useful I guess to some people, but not to me. Right. Anyway, came back up the, uh, the canyon a slight bit and uh, decided I was going to camp in this area. But before doing that I had to empty all my SD cards from my cameras. So I had to just set up a little office here, which is not bad view from my office, and uh, just transfer all the videos and photos I've taken on the road that week and uh, stick it on my external hard drive just to back them up and free up the SD cards for the cameras. Been on the road a little while now camping all the way and uh, decided I got, I got pretty good at setting up tents. Just a shame my editing skills aren't up to scratch though. So yeah got about an hour's sleep and uh, I thought I could hear wolves outside, so I got scared and uh, ran away. So I'm actually heading back up the uh, canyon, canyon track in, in pitch black. It was pretty hard, especially when I couldn't see where I was going. It was notoriously hard anyway. But yeah, from here, we went further into Kazakhstan, but that'll be in the next video. So, see you later guys.